Can I be of any help? I need a battery for a mecha Thanks. lamp. Use your battery. Come again. Now, of course, uh, doing this allows you to come back here. Welcome to the Shi'ar Mat Tournament. Oh, but really quick, I need to check on something. Hey, Okami, what difficulty are we playing on? There you go, we're playing on hard. It's been a while since we've checked, you know, out of sheer curiosity. Now, a little detail I happen to note. I think the guy officiating the tournament is Reshev, this guy right here. I think that's supposed to be the leader of Omicron because he has the same face, but I don't know. So the first opponent is Takiz. Sure. So... That slide kick is the move I wanted access to before doing this. And you can only do that if you have the maximum fight skill level. Alright, first fight is a flawless and gets you 250 setics if you win. If you lose these fights, you get a random amount between 10 to 50. It should also be noted that any time, if you lose any of these fights, you have to restart from the beginning. There are... I'm not even going to speculate. I think there are five fights in total, based off of memory. For our second opponent is Matux. So, all of this is primarily, again, just getting the moment to knock them down. Which may come randomly due to the dodge stat, or you can try to get it by punishing a whiff. By basically they miss a hit and you punish it. 500 ZX for the second opponent, and now we're up against Chakra! Who is female, believe it or not. It's a race that we will encounter later. And even though she's female, she has the same voice as the uh, male fighters. Thousand set X for her. Tagimal, opponent number four. He's supposed to be a cyborg, by the way. No, my health is halfway down, so I decided to go ahead and just play it safe. The fifth guy is a bit of a wild card. He can be really easy or really hard, and I'll go into a little bit, little bit more detail as to why that is. But this guy, we flawless. This is the guy. And I defy you to figure out what his name actually is, because even I do not know. But the reason why this guy has a, a high amount of randomness is, you can see, he doesn't just sprint at you full on. Uh, he'll do kind of starts and stops. And I think they designed that on purpose to prevent you from doing the exploit. Which we still managed to do anyway, but again, his approach is the random factor. And that's it! In total, I believe we received about 5,000 Sedex. A little bit more than 5,000. And hey, Okami, is it still on hard? Why, yes it is. <laughs> Just making sure. I'd hate to have to re-record that. But alas, there you have it. 
6,450 Sedex are now in our possession, if you did not see that. And that's the tournament, on hard difficulty. Did not use any buff potions. Can I be did of not any use help? just full health and exploiting the AI. And what we're going to do with all of that money is we're going to buy every single large health kit we will ever need for the rest of the game. I think the total I wind up with is about 12 or 13, <laughs> as you can see. I'm not really counting, so if there's a different number, it's fine. Point being is, that's all I'll really need. And that's a good time to save the game. So, now that the tournament is done, how about we advance the plot? You know, take a load off. If you must know why we are here, <laughs> aside from Kale being a dirty cop and hoping to extort some of these dancers, uh, we're actually here because there was a certain Anissa that Din uh, interviewed. She was a witness to one of the murders, and we need to figure out which one is Anissa. But first... Kale's gonna grab a free drink off of the table. I'm looking for a girl named Anissa. Don't know her. You want a drink? No thanks. I, I want to see the girl. You get out of here unless you're looking for trouble. We don't like snoops around here. Say, don't you need a fourth degree license to sell Yuki? Check for yourself. Everything's legal. I got nothing to hide. Eh, but uh, maybe my boys back in the department don't think that much. <laughs> all right, all right. No need to get excited. Anissa is that girl dancing over there. I'll send out one of my colleagues to make sure everything's legal. Thanks for the help! <laughs> it should be noted, again, Kale being a corrupt cop, his first thought, or one of his first thoughts, is to bribe the guy. I'd like to ask questions. Follow me. <laughs> the other thought Kale had was, again, using his uh, legal authority to force the man to do what he wants. Force the bartender. And before anyone says it, yes, there's no way the player would happen to know that information. It doesn't make any sense, but, yeah, whatever. I've already told you all I know. You mustn't come back here questioning me. The boss keeps giving me dirty looks. I could get fired. You must tell me again. Same it thing was last two time. two weeks ago. As usual, I was going home from work late when I heard a horrible scream coming from an alleyway. I was scared, so I hid. I've seen a lot of weird things at night, you know. A what did you do? A couple of seconds later, a man came out of the alley. He was the police officer. He got up on his bike slider and disappeared. I went into the alley... And that's how I found the body. It was in a terrible state. There was blood everywhere and... Are you sure it was a police officer? Yes. It's just that I'm not used to seeing the dead. Are you sure it was a police yes, officer? Yes, I'm sure. I recognized his uniform when he passed under a street lamp. 
I think he might have seen me. I'll never forget his eyes. They were red, like demons. Anything else? There's something else. I didn't want to mention it the first time you and your partner came. You see, I was afraid I might get into trouble. I found a piece of paper in the alleyway. <coughs> the murderer must have lost it in the confusion. I picked it up before the police came. What was on the paper? Of course. I hid it in my dressing room. I need to see it. Um... Give me a second to change. I'll show you the paper. I'm sorry, I cracked up whenever that said, Kale said you can trust me. So, unfortunately, the interact noise interrupted her the girl screaming. And here we have to use the waiver gun on the door. Oh, a policeman left. Hey, oh well. And this is dead. There's something around her neck. And it turns out to be a key. In here, we need a couple of things. Um, we'll just ignore the dead body, because Kale doesn't care. He just wants her stuff. We need Den's card for his um, the address to his apartment. We interact with this statue. And it reveals a wall safe. Use the key on the safe. And we find the slip of paper. I should say, if you bother to follow that obvious police officer out of the room, there's no special scene or animation or anything. You'll wander out and nothing will happen or change. And this is paper, only contained a series of, basically a code. That will be important later. And with that, we're done. But before we leave, we're going to go to the bar next door, and we're going to watch a concert. Or, well, to avoid copyright strikes, we're going to see highlights of the concert. I'm not certain which David Bowie song it is, but the highlights I have are David Bowie serenading a bald man, who then retreats back to his spot. We then have David Bowie doing a very bizarre dance after T-posing, followed by whatever on earth this is. And yes, his backup dancer does have hooves for feet. And finally... After David Bowie T-poses again... For no real reason... We have these two guys completely ignoring the concert. Oh, that was fun. And then David Bowie shuts down. Back here is something I wanted to make a note of. Now there's a body that could shelter me for a while. Now, nothing regarding body swapping has been showcased or even mentioned at this point, but you get that message regardless. Which, I suppose it's inevitable to talk about this, the one of the central mechanics in this game, uh, we're just gonna <laughs> ignore what I'm doing on screen. We're just heading to a sex shop to buy a poster. Just it, don't worry about it. 
we'll need it later. But a central mechanic in this game is body swapping. However, um, the first you 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 um, cause that to happen via the reincarnation spell, as the Jafile parchment indicated. Hey, dude, what do you want? In total, for my playthrough, I'll be trading exactly. Adios, amigo. Three bodies. Yes. No, four. Because of the final boss, right. Four bodies in total. As far as the game is concerned, in total there are... Oh, lord. I'm not going to say the number. I don't know the exact number. But there are over a dozen uh, bodies that you can swap into via the reincarnation spell. Uh, we will not be doing that because it really isn't necessary. A number of things occur whenever you switch bodies, or are forced to switch bodies, and I'll get into that when it becomes relevant. But, for one thing, you lose all fight experience. So, us training to be the Grand Master of Tar, you, you go back to whatever that body's fight experience level is baseline. You also, in another bizarre turn, Lose all of the money that you currently have in your possession. So those 6,000 ZX, if you switched into that guy's body in the bar, you would lose all 6,000 of those ZX. It is what it is. Eh. But alas, now that we have Den's police badge, it's time to get into his office. See if there's anything there we can make use of. Of course, Kale's really just interested to see if his, you know, if the bottle of whiskey is still back there. After all, keep in mind, when Kale went to the morgue and saw Den's body, he didn't even say anything. He just grabbed his sneak and ran. We're stopping on floor negative one to drop off the erotic poster. It... it... just... It just follow along. Because it turns out, the Director of Internal Affairs, this guy... Hi, I've got a gift. A gift? For me? <laughs> This guy's a creeper, so we're going to give him this uh, hentai poster and hope he likes it. Wow. Another one for my collection. You know, it's funny. You always see the same thing, but you never grow tired of it. Little gifts foster friendship. Here's one for me. His name is Boog. Just... Just let that sit. Now, I consider going into this office before realize, remembering the proper office to go into. He hands you the security master key. It allows you to open only one, just one, of the locked doors in the police station. With the exception, the sole exception of Den's office. But this is the office you really want to open because it has a free octogun inside. Now, ignore the fact that... or ignoring the fact that uh, the waiver gun has infinite ammo and the octogun does not. It... it, it, it I want to show it off. Just let me show it off. That'll be for a later time. So I mentioned Reshev earlier. He's the, well, the de facto, the, the human leader of Omicron. You can see his portrait on the wall in the various offices around the police station. He's the guy with the weird blue box head. And I swear that is him officiating the Shiar Mat tournament. 
Although there's no direct confirmation of that in any way, shape, or form. So, coming down to the level where Kale's office is on, Den's office is right adjacent to it. Quite convenient. And inside... <laughs> Den's dead. I can swipe his stuff. Sweet! We have a memo about the Awakened cult, and a message. Which says... Truth hides behind the tiger. We then get some information on the Awakened. And a huge heaping of foreshadowing. See that portrait? That's Reshev. He's not important. And we get Den's apartment key. Oh man, his office didn't have that much loot, but maybe his house will, says Kale. How's it going, Kale? Anything new on Den's death? Nothing new at the moment. Well, you know you can count on me if you need any help. Hey, don't worry about it. Good luck, Kale. I really hope you make it. So I deliberately chose not to tell him anything. His dialogue doesn't really add anything new. If you talk to, if you tell him about, um, uh, nothing new is given. Kale, you've got to come home. There's no time to explain. Come to the apartment right away, please. You've got to come. <laughs> well. Even though there was no time, I'd really like an explanation of that. And so at last. Time to head back to Kale's apartment. Telus is in danger! I can't help but find it odd that there's no message at the bottom of the screen saying, I need to head back to there, just something. So strange. And the elevator just senses where you want to go, seeing as the key is gone. Inside, we have a message. Ooh. Tell us message. Her name's on it and everything. Meet me right away on the roof. Make haste, my love. Nobody says that anymore. Make haste. It means move quickly. Make it a save game here. It'll be useful to me later on. But in the meantime, that's for that's for video making purposes. For plot, let's head to the roof. Tell us. Tell us what happened. Oh, Kale, I was so scared. A demon came here looking for you. He was really angry. He said he wanted your soul. Come here, please. Hold me in your arms. See, I told you demons were real. Take me in your arms, darling. So I we just flawless a demon. And Kale should probably be feeling amazing right now because he just punched out a demon. <laughs> Didn't even get scratched. But oh, who are you? My name doesn't matter. I had you brought here because I have something important to tell you. 
What's that? I have come to warn you that your life is in terrible danger. From who? <laughs> I'm not choosing that. The demons are looking for you. They want your soul. You've already escaped from them several times. They're mad with rage. Why do they want my soul? The demons get their evil force from people's souls. The more souls they have, the stronger they are. They take the souls to their master, Astaroth, and those souls are then damned for all eternity. And what happens if they get you my soul? You would be damned for all eternity. In your dimension, your body would be no more than an empty shell. And your soul would be here in Astaroth's Reservoir of Souls, enduring infinite torment. What should I do? The first thing to do is to destroy the gate the demons created between your dimension and ours. Otherwise, more players will fall for the trap as you did, and the demons will become so powerful that no one will be able to stop them. How can I destroy the gate? Astaroth put one of his lieutenants in charge of the gate. You will have to kill the Guardian to destroy it. How do I get in? Or who is it? Astaroth is the Prince of Darkness. He is the leader of the Horde of Demons. He wants souls. More and more souls to increase his power. No one has ever seen him, and no one knows where he hides. He is the incarnation of evil. Who guards the gate? Gandar is the guardian of the gate. Commander Gandar? He had Kale murdered and sent you his body to capture your soul. He and his horde of demons are also responsible for the series of murders that Kale and Den were investigating before they were killed. How can I get to the gate? You can access the gate through Gandar's office. You'll need a power rod to destroy it. It's the only way to annihilate a demon's work. How do I get a power rod? You and Den found the only way to get there. All you have to do is follow the same route. Well, that's to get to Gandar's office. How do I get a power rod? A Yeshu monk awaits you in front of the supermarket in Zone 9. Show him the sign of the Awakened, and he will lead you to someone who can help you. Why should I trust you? I can't tell you anymore for the moment. You must trust me. You have no choice in the matter. Unless you want to burn in hell. To get into Gondar's lair, you must first know the door code. Gondar was careless enough to leave it at the scene of one of his murders. Anissa found it. You absolutely must get your hands on the code. Off to Gandar's lair.